We'd heard the rumours and we'd even seen some pretty solid reporting before now, but actual hardware has finally broken cover. And it's looking promising. Valve's brand new Steam Deck is built on the same architectural building blocks as the new consoles from Sony and Microsoft, downscaled and refactored for a handheld, with up to 1.6 teraflops of GPU compute power aimed at delivering circa 720p gaming, the idea is to break the PC away from the traditional limitations of the PC itself. It's a handheld, designed to be as liberating as Nintendo Switch, but tied into the openness and the sheer size of PC and the Steam ecosystem. Now, there have been outsized PC handhelds before, of course, and it should be stressed that the Steam Deck is a bit of a beast, measures 29.8 centimeters across, almost six centimeters longer than a standard Nintendo Switch, which already felt somewhat on the larger size for a mobile console. Its size is almost certainly dictated by two factors, the amount of power flowing through the machine and the need to dissipate the heat generated. More area effectively gives the hardware engineers more possibilities in keeping the device cool. The second crucial factor concerns battery life. The processor alone tops out at drawing 15 watts of power. So a meaty 40 watt hour battery is included and that requires space. Thankfully, with this real estate available, containing the 7-inch 1280x860Hz LCD panel is not too much of a challenge. The size of the machine also serves to house the complex controller setup. Dual capacitive sticks, uh, well, the machine knows when you're touching them, they're paired with all of the controller inputs you'll find on a standard joypad, along with twin touchpads and programmable paddles on the rear of the unit. From a controller standpoint, the idea is to ensure complete compatibility with a PC library, an extension of the philosophy uh, behind the original Steam controller. Beyond that, it seems that every element of I.O. from displays to peripherals is all routed through the USB-C port on the top of the machine, and there is an option to purchase an additional dock with HDMI, DisplayPort, and more I.O. functions. But really, the most interesting elements of Steam Deck are the semi-custom AMD processor and the background operating system. And we'll start with the first there. Valve, via IGN, describes the chip as being next-gen in nature using the latest architectures, which is true, but only if we consider the consoles as the defining factor of what a generation actually is. You can effectively consider Steam Deck's chip as being most similar in nature to Xbox Series S, with significant reductions from that in all dimensions. The 8-core, 16-thread AMD Zen 2 chip is cut down by half to 4 cores and 8 threads, while the fixed 3.6 GHz clock adjusts to a variable 2.4 to 3.5 GHz. Series S's 20 RDNA 2 compute units drop down to just 8, and again, a fixed clock on the Microsoft machine of around 1.6 GHz shifts to a variable 1 GHz to 1.6 on Steam Deck, meaning a range of 1 teraflop to 1.6 teraflops of GPU compute up against the locked 4 teraflops of Series S. Bearing in mind that we've measured Series S as drawing up to 82.5 watts of power, we do need to keep expectations in check about the performance of Steam Deck. So why have I chosen Series S as the comparison point here? Well, I think longevity of this system is a key concern. Series S is effectively the baseline for next generation games development. And yeah, Steam Deck is considerably less powerful. But on the flip side, the chip has much more in common with that console than Switch does with the last-gen equivalent consoles. Of course, up against the specifications of Nintendo Switch, this is hugely more powerful in every dimension you can pretty much imagine. Another key decision Valve has made about the specification of the unit concerns the memory, and we're getting 16 gigs of LPDDDR5. Now, traditionally, graphics performance with AMD's APUs in the PC desktop space has been severely limited by memory bandwidth as opposed to compute. Games tend to gain more performance from pairing the APUs with faster memory, as opposed to overclocking the GPU itself. What Valve has come up with is a good solution for Steam Deck. 
16 gigs of memory is going to prove essential in future-proofing this machine. That's considerably more than Xbox Series S, remember, which has 10 gigs of RAM, 8 gigs available for games. And the LPDDDR5 should mitigate uh, the bandwidth problems with desktop APUs. It should have the bandwidth available to keep those compute units fed, assuming something like a 128-bit interface has been implemented. There are three Steam Decks available at launch at $399, $529 and $649. All that separates them at the internal hardware level is the amount of storage, while at the top end, anti-glare glass is attached to the 7-inch LCD display, which peaks at 400 nits brightness. The base unit comes with a mere 64GB of eMMC NAND flash, while the higher level options ship with 256 and 512GB of NVMe storage respectively. According to Valve, the more space you opt for, the faster the read-write capabilities of the respective storage solutions. On top of this, a microSD slot is available to add additional space, but in loading time terms, performance here will very much come down to the quality of the card you insert. Personally, I'd strongly recommend either of the NVMe options over a NAND-based Steam Deck unit. The hardware looks best in class for a handheld, and if Valve's intent is to deliver some level of competition to Nintendo Switch with its pricing, the value proposition is off the charts, relatively speaking. However, it is the software that has it all to prove. Steam Deck is effectively a PC as open as any other, there's nothing stopping you from installing Microsoft Windows or any other OS. However, that's not what the deck ships with. What you're getting is an evolution of Steam OS, meaning that Linux is the primary operating system. This presents something of a problem or a challenge in that actual native support for Linux is thin on the ground, while support for the preferable Vulkan graphics API is stronger, but still far from taking root as the industry standard for PC gaming. Valve's solution is a beefed up version of Proton, a collection of technologies including Wine and DXVK that reinterpret Windows code to run on Linux. The Proton DB database gives you some outlook on how good the technology currently is, but it's clear that 100% compatibility is not a given and you should expect a hit to performance compared to running natively on Windows. With that said, Steam is talking about vastly improving Proton's game compatibility and support for anti-cheat solutions, and they're doing this by working directly with the vendors. Now, this is still the area where I'm cautious about Steam Deck's chances of fully delivering on the system's potential, the compatibility layer there. It's going to need to be phenomenally good to get best performance uh, from what is an excellent processor judged by mobile standards, but is a rather weak one relative to a mainstream gaming PC, which fundamentally the games have been designed for. Questions also need to be asked about overall game performance, and we need to see much more from the system before we can offer any kind of definitive verdict. On the one hand, we've seen the device running challenging AAA titles, I mean, running the full-fat PC rendition of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order on a mobile processor, I'd say that's no mean feat. Even more impressive than that is the split-second view we had of Remedy's control running on the system. Man, that is a demanding title. So by extension, we can assume a very healthy level of performance for Steam Deck on the vast majority of PC titles in the Steam library. And let's not forget, we're talking about a catalogue of games here that's stretching back for decades. However, on the flip side, we have to think about the gaming generation to come. Now, at the moment, as I said, I'd say that the baseline for that, pretty much defined by Xbox Series S, which is already facing some challenges. Now, that processor is considerably more power hungry than the Steam Decks, and in its pursuit of 60 frames per second for much of its library, dynamic resolution ranges are already hitting 720p minimums or even lower in the case of titles like Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition. And that's using a very low level of the DirectX 12 API built specifically for Xbox Series Silicon. Comparisons with Nintendo Switch also need to be treated with some degree of caution. 
On the one hand, there's no doubt that at the core specs level, Steam Deck really is literally generations ahead. But at the same time, comparisons between Switch and Nvidia Shield Android TV, which use the exact same chip, show just how much extra performance is gained by having that direct low-level API access that Nintendo and Nvidia delivered. All of which leads us on to what I think is the key factor that could make or break Steam Deck. Developer buy-in. Nintendo and Nvidia gave developers the tools and the API to make Switch everything it could be. But fundamentally, it's the game makers that tailored their code to the Tegra X1 processor that delivered spectacular results. The list of so-called impossible ports for the Nintendo hybrid is immense. But the reason why they exist is because the time and the effort was put in for this individual platform. So for Steam Deck, that's going to start with bespoke settings profiles uh, that deliver a good experience for the hardware right from boot with no further tuning from the user required. Though of course, settings menus should and will remain. But going forward, ensuring scalability is key to Steam Deck's future fortunes. Many existing techniques that we've seen in the console space, such as uh, temporal supersampling and dynamic resolution scaling, well, bringing them across from other consoles proved crucial for Switch ports, and I strongly suspect that Steam Deck is gonna need them too to really be the best it can be in delivering stable performance. And if this leads to a stronger basis for scalability for PC ports in general, that can only be a good thing, right? Generally speaking, if the aim is to bring PC gaming more into the mainstream, the process of getting good out-of-the-box performance needs to be just as seamless as it is on consoles. And to keep Steam Deck viable over the years, more lower-end options are going to be required from developers for the latest games. Beyond this, what also interests me about Steam Deck is the idea of PC gaming moving beyond the desktops and the laptops that we have now into a whole new space. And with Nintendo having continuously proven the mainstream appeal of the mobile form factor, I'd say that this is a bold move by Valve, to say the least. Especially in terms of pricing, which is very un-PC-like, and much more in line with console costs. But there's a key difference here, and it's core to PC DNA, the idea that this machine is based on an entirely open platform. Valve is clear that Steam Deck is a PC that you can do anything you like with, up to and including the installation of Microsoft Windows, which may well deliver improved performance on many games. In the here and now though, from my perspective there are three key areas where Steam Deck has to prove itself. First of all, it's about the unit's functionality as a handheld. This thing is truly large. The ergonomics need to work, the screen needs to deliver, and the battery life has to be decent. Secondly, compatibility is key. If Valve is talking about accessing your Steam library, that needs to just work. And that's where the apparently vast improvement in the Proton compatibility layer really needs to deliver. And finally, it's all about performance. The fundamentals are there to ensure that games run. But how well are they going to run? We are in a time of cross-gen transition in the industry. If the titles of today run fine, what about the games of tomorrow? For me, that's the key question. But that's all from me for now. Obviously, we'll be following this one and reviewing the Steam Deck hardware as soon as we can, most likely around the December launch. But if you enjoyed this overview, please like, subscribe, share and ring the bell for instant notifications. The DF Supporter Program, join us for behind the scenes videos, direct access to the team via Discord, reams of bonus material, and of course, pristine quality video downloads of everything we do and indeed have done since the tail end of 2016. But for now, thanks for making it all the way to the end of this one, if indeed you did, and just generally, thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.